Good morning everyone, please uh, good morning 12th of December we start it. Uh, this is the diagram, uh, any, I think you have seen this diagram in parsing it will be used and you see that there is a stack here, the stack is excellent, uh, it is it, you, you have find the stack in lots of cases. I think uh, should I remember you that stack is used whenever you make a uh, function call, uh, whenever you make a function call you put your values, current values in your register to a stack and put your if you if you tear uh, I think microprocessor is not in your course, but if you uh, teach uh, if you learn microprocessor you see it the whenever call a function main call function call another function all the register values are put onto a stack push and then uh, even the in return address of the program counter that is that is also pushed into it whenever it returns uh, it takes all the register values and take the return address. So, that is the best use of stack whenever because any procedural function is you require a repeated function call or recursion. So, every time a program goes to a function call, so all the because registers are very costly things. The register contains and and wh when the it will return everything they put into a stack like everything they put into a stack and do the things and whenever that finish you pop the stack. That is the beautiful architecture of push and pop uh, almost like a common balance in physics laboratories and with a common balance you can do a lot of experiments uh, whether uh, you have a many types of balls, similar kinds of balls, one ball may be uh, slightly heavy, uh, lightly uh, heavier or lighter you can with a common balance with minimum of uh, two or three or four times you can find it out. The same kind of performance in the stack, uh, you also know push down automata when the automata is a to the power n, b to the power n. Uh, so, whenever the a to the power n is coming, a is coming, the you push a is into the stack. When the b's are coming, it takes pop of the stack one, then a and b matches, it throws out, then all a finishes and b finishes. So, stack is empty, input stage is empty, then um, it is. Uh, uh, your language is recognized. So, st stack is uh, immensely powerful. Uh, another example of stack is whenever you go for depth first search, you see whenever you uh, from node, uh, you forget about parsing. If you go for depth first search, uh, if you go for depth from uh, root node to child node, you put everything into a stack and uh, you go deep down. And whenever you go uh, breadth uh, first search, then you see that you put in a list. So, stack is used there also. Here also in the parsing, in the top down parsing and the bottom up parsing, the stack is heavily used. Any idea how the stack is used? Just little idea. So, here the input string will be like here, it will be put it here and end with a dollar. Dollar is the end of mark marker, like is the end of string marker. And in the stack, we have again another dollar. Remember this dollar and this dollar uh, no, rela no relation, only it is shows end of the string and here it, it shows the end of the stack. In my earlier uh, uh, PDA lectures, I prefer Z0, I will prefer Z0 at the end of stack marker, I prefer Z0, but here most of the literature I found that they have found the dollar, but this dollar, this dollar no significance. So, uh, this dollar is the end of stack marker, this is the end of the list. Now, all your uh, top down list, you know, all your see, input string, you put it here, okay, from left to right, and in here, the dollar here. Then you put the start symbol here. So, at the top of the stack is S, if the S is the start symbol, and input string is here, and then you try to match top of the stack S variable to leftmost variable here. If it matches, you throw it out, if it does not matches, then uh, you you uh, you go on doing this. We will we'll do this. This is a uh, top down parsing and bottom up parsing uh, is a totally reverse. Bottom up parsing whole input string it pushed into a stack, not here. The whole input string pushed into a stack and we try to match the uh, uh, this top of the stack try to get a handle. Handle is uh, so that you can derive the rule and put it to a stack like so that when the and then everything is fine then you pop. So, if uh, whenever the stack is empty and input is empty the it matches if there is something remaining there 
like as a push down automata uh, here other than 2 dollar uh, in the both the cases that means uh, your parsing fails ok you will I will come back to details and just uh, again uh, we are not confused the top down parsing and bottom up parsing uh, top down parsing is easiest to understand uh, here I have already told you how to make a parse table parse table is very simple you have to take left hand side will be all the variables and uh, top side will be the terminals and every variable and every terminal there should be one and only rule how to get the rule you will get the first of any variable function so you can put the uh, that only one and one only grammar function should be there the some of the boxes may remain empty that means error condition that is ok but it cannot be ll1 parsing if there is a variable and a terminal more than one rule then that will be definitely not ll1 grammar and uh, that is it and the uh, and parsing table is very helpful and it can be made handmade if you have a few variables say 10 20 variables it can be make man made and uh, yeah that is it this is a uh, basically uh, is architecture and this is I am taking the top down of, uh, architecture and ll1 parsing ok let us go ahead with a little bit more uh, I think uh, in most of the books and uh, some of your uh, presentation also uh, there are some confusion regarding uh, brute force method and recursive descent uh, both are basically same uh, brute force method means you uh, brute force method can uh, parse any grammar ok even if ambiguous grammar they should can have uh, um, do different parse tree or abstract syntax tree. So, brute force method is good uh, if it is a few rules say 5, 6, 8, 10 rules then brute force method is ok, but any programming language you have many variables you have many variables in your program if you have many um, uh, uh, int semicolon uh, uh, opening bracket closing brackets many keywords every keyword is a token uh, every variable is a token. So, even a 10 line program can have a token uh, we have done some good examples even a single line program can give you 10 tokens a uh, lot of people uh, you have already given a presentation even a 10 line program can 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 have 50 or 60 tokens. Uh, in that case the rule may be 10 rules uh, that may not be manageable if it is uh, full fledged programming language there may be 200 to 300 tokens it may be 100 lines then this uh, brute force method is a totally failure. So, uh, little advanced little better than brute force method is recursive descent. What is uh, difference between brute force method and recursive descent? In brute force methods we do not modify the grammar anything, but if there is a left recursion you do know the rules left recursion means uh, the variable same variable comes on the directly on the left side and comes on the directly on the right side play s towards s a a a small a, a smaller the s comes both the side left side right side. that is called direct left recursion and here may be indirect left recursion s to uh, a cap small a a to d s small c like this is the indirect recursion both this recurs recursive left recursion will play havoc uh, in fact uh, then lot of uh, infinite loop can be there. So, um, in the but brute force does not care uh, it takes lots of uh, uh, go back and forth takes us memory space it might take o n cube o n 4 n is the terminals and recursive descent if you disallow if you convert this right, uh, left recursive grammar to right recursive grammar there is a rule I have already covered it uh, I if again I can uh, ask me I can do this is a another a dash. Uh, you put it in the right hand side. So, left recursion can be modified in the grammar if you that modify the grammar then the recursive descent is good good enough, but recursive descent can backtrack the backtrack means recursive descent uh, if the uh, it does not get the desired uh, terminals it it again go back and try another rule say a particular variables s uh, one rule starts with small a. Uh, it, capital B another rule S capital C small b like this. So, it starts with a variable every variable have a, uh, a procedure and it 
try to fix the variable to dash procedure if it desired uh, left to right the top down if the string is matches uh, then it is okay otherwise you go back and uh, if the variable have procedures uh, maybe uh, starting with a is one rule starting with b is another rule it goes changes the uh, everywhere if it doesn't find any rule then you say no it cannot be parts so that is called recursive descent with backtrack okay that is called uh, with research recursive descent with backtrack so that is good enough but what we want in uh, non recursive so there will be like a deterministic finite state machine it is a very good example of deterministic finite state machine deterministic finite state machine you remember whenever one state to one state it goes to one and only definite state with a variable so same thing happens here this kind of thing uh, like this not a deterministic finite state machine we want that recursion should not be any way can be called back so if we want to show the discipline should be if i take a recursion that is absolutely 100% i will not go back so that can be uh, done by this non recursive descent so there's another name of non recursive descent is uh, top down ll1 parsing with one look ahead agreed so first is brute force uh, everything is allowed gamma did not to be modified uh, it is uh, recursion is there uh, backtrack is there uh, so it takes time and all then if you improve so you, you remove the left recursions with the right recursions the rules i have already covered Mm, and then uh, it is not guaranteed that it can be done in a uh, ll1 grammar uh, the ll1 grammar can be guaranteed if we uh, calculate the first functions and follow functions and then we we have to we have already covered first and follow uh, try to remember what the first function is i am again telling it uh, the the rules are there you first check uh, whether there is a left recursion is there if it is a left recursion you change it to right recursion if you if the question paper comes say um, this is these are the rules whether it is a top down grammar is possible or not then you don't have to convert it you have just see whether there is a left recursion if the left recursion uh, is there you say no it cannot be possible so there will be no left recursion but if you cannot see the obvious left recursion then what you do you take the you take out the variables which are the variables you take out the variables and take the first function of variable first set or first the that says is a set of terminals which can begin first of terminal is always a terminal and first of variable uh, is the what are the terminals it could begin and follow means uh, what are the things uh, it can follow so then we can make a uh, parsing table let's see uh, we go and uh, then we will we'll see it. Yeah, this is already covered. Let's. Yeah, this is uh, this is the construction of LL1 parsing table. The first you calculate the first function. The, if there is a variable, I think it I have called already covered and follow. Uh, it is what are the terminals can follow it. Uh, this is. I think is it visible to you? Is it visible, please? this one hope uh, this one might gi give me some example yes let us start this grammar is visible this grammar is visible this grammar is visible yes anyone response nisha yes sir yes. This, this if you take this grammar then you have to calculate which is not there it is a little bit of home task because the screen is available to you i will give you you try to get first of s so what could be the first of s first of s definitely a small a it will be definitely small a and first of s can be what what is the first of s that is the calculate or, or it will be first of b what is the first of b first of b is b so first of s is equal to a comma b okay but if we see the terminals here and the variables here with the first of s and uh, terminal we have only one rule only one rule 
if start s with the terminal there is only another rule this rule and for b to b so b to b there is only one rule so if we create this parsing table by the first offset calculation then you ask why it is the go for follow set yes sometimes follow sets not sometimes more you have to for every variable you calculate first set and follow set why say here uh, uh, this is uh, say uh, what i can say here uh, this is first set uh, yeah say this is the b what could be the follow set of b it is nothing but first set of a are you getting the follow set of b it can be the first set of a so that is the vice versa we will uh, just uh, by inspection uh, we will we will say the first set of all the variables and follow set of very all the variables if a particular variable last day i have already covered if a particular variable say s s goes to x1 uh, x um, uh, x uh, to w1 say w1 the string x to w1 uh, alternative w2 alternative bar w3 then uh, the thing is that you have to calculate first of w2 if first of a is equal to dub first of w2 when when w1 goes to epsilon if w1 doesn't go to epsilon if the first w1 get a terminal then you don't have to go for uh, w1 w2 okay first of w2 so if all these things is s goes to w1 s goes to w1 forward slash w2 all goes to epsilon then epsilon should be into the first ascent remember and always uh, dollar uh, should be after s it will be always at the follow function so here if you see a the always is is the dollar dollar should be there because at the end it is in the end there you can ask whether it will be the uh, dollar should be the follow of a or b you just check it out okay probably not because s is at the end uh, a is not at the end because after follow definitely a there okay and b b a follow of b is first of a okay so similarly if a and another thing you have to say whether any variable is nullable or not say here s goes to nullable what is the first of s and what is the follow of s follow of s is dollar okay and first of s doesn't contain dollar so first of s and follow of s should be shy intersection should be shy so for a ll1 grammar uh, the there are before going to parsing table you first calculate first of all variables first of first calculation very easy you just check which is the terminal comes first and the start variable uh, follow function will be always dollar if any other variable at the end of the any rule uh, then it can be dollar can be there epsilon cannot be there in the follow function and first function can have epsilon but epsilon uh, then if the value of variable goes to nullable then also then only the epsilon can be there if the variables are nullable then you have to take first of that variable and follow of that variable intersection should be shy if that doesn't maintain then it is not a top down ll1 passing table you cannot make but whenever you can make whether these rules are okay this you have got this then you can definitely make this parsing table the parsing table always this side should be your variables all variables and right hand side of the terminals what are the terminals it can be integer int float your these are the terminals comma semicolon in the c language this is semicolon comma beginning bracket open bracket first bracket it, it is your terminal and this is your uh, all variables mm, your variable then for every variable and every terminal you can get it from first function of that variable which rule which rule you can fire okay if there are only one and only rule in some cases you cannot find a rule you can say it is a error but at that is also uh, does, uh, is okay for ll1 parsing table uh, maybe that 
terminal and that variable never comes into the stack okay so this is uh, this is your um, parsing table now from there whenever you get a ll1 parsing table uh, there no duplicate entry and whatever i have told then it is a 100% uh, deterministic finite uh, determ de de deterministic context free grammar definitely it definitely unambiguous grammar because any unambiguous gram um, ambiguous grammar cannot do this so unambiguous grammar and it can be parsed in o n and uh, this is a recursive descent parsing without backtrack so that is l l 1 parsing but is uh, number of languages are small we will see later when at the bottom of parsing when the we try to match from the right hand side we can have more powerful uh, uh, technique but there the parsing table construction it is here very straightforward it can be done by your hand but there the parsing table creation it's a more rigorous thing okay so yeah if this is uh, c we have a we have a string like bcba okay we have a string bcba so input string we put bcba dollar you remember this bcba dollar and the stack we put dollar and start variable okay now we have to check with s with this b s with b we found the rule s with b with the bas baa this rule okay so what we have done we have to uh, this is your my sentence I have to parse it by LL1 parsing table. What we have done, I just repeat once more. Uh, just repeat once more. We put the this string here, okay, and padding with the dollar. And here, this dollar we put S here, okay. Then what is my logic is uh, S and the, here the leftmost terminal. We try to find the rule from the parsing table. And put the rule, uh, the right hand side to into it. This is the logic, this, the into it. Then we topmost variable or terminal. If it's a term, if it comes a terminal here, if it is comes a terminal here, we throw it out. We, ter we throw this terminal out. That it matches. We throw this terminal out. That it matches. Then, then if there is another terminal here, if there is another terminal here, the it, it will shift right hand side. We throw the terminal. We throw the terminal. If it comes a variable here, sometimes it must be variable here, and it's a terminal. Then this variable and this terminal, we try to match the rule from the um, parsing table. Uh, the if it is matches one to one, say capital B here it is a small b, both I, both this b will be thrown out, this b will be popped up. Okay, if it um, matches, the rule is not b to b. Rule is say. B, b to capital C or B to uh, say B to C D, then C D to be pushed here and it will be unchanged here. C D should be C D capital C D should be pushed here and we try to match the uh, C with this B. If we can any rule, then uh, fine. Ultimately, ultimately uh, it, it will be finished and here it will be finished. Uh, it will be only dollar here like PDA, uh, like here dollar here, then the it is successfully parsed. If there are uh, remaining uh, terminal here uh, and uh, no, nothing to match here, uh, then there will be error, then we will call the panic error. We'll, uh, we have already little covered a panic, so compiler will uh, give a uh, error signal, so this is not match or here it is a nothing is finished your remaining variable is there that is also a panic so both the cases in those cases when the panic comes then they uh, throw everything out and try to get a uh, positive marker of a program what are these like semicolon bracket these are the definite end of a some loop so till that everything they reach there and everything is thrown out okay that is called the, uh, the uh, that is uh, that is called panic and and uh, different kinds of this uh, once is uh, terminal based uh, problem when there is an unmatched terminal uh, or there is an unmatched variable okay if variable cannot be here here is all our terminal here is both the cases terminal and variable 
Okay, let's go this. Uh, so uh, from this, you have to calculate. That is the home task. I um, will give the assignment. This is the small home task. You get the uh, this uh, grammar function. You calculate your first of a follow of a first of a follow of a, and if you just check that uh, there is no left recursion, and then it is okay for LL1. And from first and follow, and if any variable is nullable, like here S is nullable, A is nullable then uh, a particular variable is nullable then you must go for first of that variable and follow up that variable only intersection set should be shy uh, so we have to check those this if this is not that the it cannot be this this parsing table cannot be there and uh, this parsing table is nothing but if you remember the the diagram the this is the variable and this is the terminal and the leftmost side you have to match one rule and this rule has to be this side has to be pushed into the stack and then you have to matches the uh, this this to other terminal if it matches you can take the pronoun so this is uh, can be done in linear time uh, so let's go to the next screen yes uh, next screen here we have seen that uh, this is bcba so we uh, first is dollar in the stack and bcba into the input string so s to match with b so s to match with b s and match with b so we this is the rule and we pushed this rule in reverse order b a a are you getting this is pushed in reverse order b a a okay so then b has to be matched this b has to be matched with this b this b has to be matched with this is the rule this is the rule the match b so b is thrown out this b is thrown out and this b is also thrown out this b is taken off this b taken out then we comes a and c what is the rule of a and c we see at a and c a is equal to ca so a is equal to ca ha ac has to be pushed you see it is pushed ac then you have to match this c to this c and it is matches so it will be thrown out this is matches so it will be thrown out match c so there will be a a and b a now it have to match a to this a to b is there any rule try to see it here this is your lookup table a to b yeah it is b a so b a is pushed b a is pushed now we see b here b here you b popped and this input you take it out then it comes a a a dollar s now we have to match a a see here a a how much you can see it here no so we can go to a epsilon so take a out because a epsilon is there now a out then match a a match a so it matches yes that is the great of top down parsing uh, and uh, in the in the next day we will start for we we'll go for more examples of top down ll1 table and more detail you should practice with more examples and uh, next day we will start with uh, bottom up parsing bottom up parsing whole technology is different what they do the whole string into put into a stack here we put into only s and then the parsing table we put the uh, that derivation but here all the things into the stack and from right hand from left to right we try to get it a handle handle means uh, uh, right post handle so that you can derive it from the your grammar so you put that variable into it so that uh, it is a shift shift grammar either you shift shift or shift reduce you will get to a more variable ultimately it will be s again here you start from s and um, lot of things comes it vanish then there all the things they are bottom up uh, all the input string comes here you ultimately a should be here okay so that's it bottom up parsing uh, we'll cover next day so any question now please okay thank you very much for your presence